Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 164 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a 2-5 session at one Eye Jacks at Sarasota, Florida. This video specifically has a ton of hands that have a little bit more educational value than normal. So if you're trying to get better, this is definitely the video for you. And we're going to roll the tape. First hand of note. We start at the 1-3 table today as we arrive somewhat early. 2-5 isn't running. And we look down at 9-10 of diamonds. On the button, we straddle. And when four players limp to us, we're going to raise this one. We plan for $30. Don't really expect too many folds to happen to this bet. But this hand in particular plays fine multi-way, so we're not too worried about it. And all the limpers decide to call, so we end up going five ways to a flop of Ace, King, Deuce, Rainbow. With one diamond. This is a very good board for my range. I have aces and kings in range. My opponents really don't. Pretty much ever, but I do have backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, plenty of equity that I can realize, and if my opponents had like ace five, they're not really folding to a bet here, so I think checking is a fine option. Planning on giving up if unimproved, but the turn is the nine of hearts, so we improve to a third pair, not a bad development. Still may fold to a bet, but it checks all the way to the cutoff who only bets $20. What? This is such a small bet. Out of all the players to have a strong hand, this is the player I expect it the least. Any of the early position players can definitely have weak suited aces here. And if it checks to them and they get the option on the turn, I expect them to bet. But when it goes all the way to the cutoff, he's a player most likely to be betting here just trying to steal. Maybe he's even value betting a king. I specifically would check like ace 10 here, not trying to bet into four people all too often on the flop and not worried about too many turn cards, so I still have some strong aces in range. We're gonna raise here, represent one of those hands, hopefully get my opponent with his weak king, maybe his weakest aces, maybe pocket tens to fold here. So I raised to $90. All the early position players fold, and then the cutoff eventually relinquishes his cards as well. Decent pickup, somewhat turning a nine into a bluff. We're starting out pretty hot. Following that, an early position player raised to $20. I'm in the big blind with ace-jack offsuit, I make the call. There was a $5 under the gun straddle, so that straddler makes the call as well. And we're going three ways to jack 10 deuce rainbow. I check in flow, happily check call a bet here, but not really ever leading out. When it checks the preflop aggressor, he checks it back. Pretty good development, ace-jack should be best hand pretty much always. So when the three of clubs hits the turn, I'm going to bet a little over half pot. I bet $35, pretty standard. Well, the preflop aggressor decides to continue. Somewhat odd, he has a hand strong enough to check call but not bet himself. And the river is the seven of diamonds. Nine eight gets there and maybe jack seven, but really not a whole lot to be afraid of. I actually expect my opponent to bet nine eight some of the time, so we can pretty happily go for some value. Maybe a 10 pays us, maybe some disbelieving ace highs. I assemble $80, but my opponent folds before I can even get the money into the middle. After that, a middle position player raises to $15 The cutoff calls. I'm in the small blind with ace queen of spades. We're not calling this one. This one's definitely a three bet. I settle on a sizing of $65. Play a bigger hand with a premium. Even out of position seems reasonable. But it's not going to come to that. Both players fold and we pick up over $30 of dead money. Next hand of note. I'm in middle position with ace 10 offsuit. With a button $5 straddle, there's one limp. I decide to raise to $25, size up a bit, try to thin the field as this is not a hand that plays too well multi-way. But two later position players call, the button calls, and the limper calls as well, so maybe I should have sized way up if I didn't want to go multi-way. But regardless, we get a flop of king 8 for rainbow. I have a clear nut advantage, I'm the only one who can have pocket kings and ace king most of the time, so you could continue here, but I also think it's fine to just give up on hands some of the time, protect your image, Makes it so you're not just blasting on every board, get people to start playing back at you. But when I check, this one checks all the way through. Okay, maybe I can turn some equity. And that is what happens. I turn the 10 of diamonds. Now when it checks me on the turn, I'm going to go for a smaller, under half pot size bet. Really just trying to thin the field. As I was an early position raiser, I expect anyone who had a king to just bet when checked to. So 10 should be good here at least a decent portion of the time, at least 75% or more. So I bet $55 trying to thin the field. We get two folds. The button, he's going to be a little bit sticky. He's going to call. Not super ideal, but when the early position player folds, we end up going heads up to river card, which is the biggest brick in the deck. Deuce of hearts. 
Now I think my hand is plenty strong to go into a check call mode. So I check and my opponent assembles a large bet. He counts out $200 and slides in in the middle. And I snap call. I don't think so. So I call for a few reasons. First of all, my opponent's doing a polarized sizing. So he's saying that he has the nuts or nothing. And on this polarized sizing, he literally can't have pocket kings. There's one combination of pocket tens that are even possible because I have a 10. I think it's pretty unlikely he just checked a set of eights or a set of fours when there's a king out there to get value from. Additionally, to just bet a king here, he would have had to have not bet when there was four other opponents he would need to protect against when he's on the button and it's checked to him. So having just a single king here and betting huge is somewhat ridiculous. And then additionally, my hand specifically does not block any of the bluffs. It doesn't block jack queen, jack nine, nine seven, plenty of straight draws that are absolutely 100% available to my opponent who would have to bomb river if he missed and it wanted to win. A final note on this hand is pretty much under three hands before this hand, this opponent had got stacked. He's on a fresh rebuy. I expect him to be tilting at least some percentage of the time adding to a large wager here. So all that leads me to a snap call and a snap I missed. So that's going to be good for us. We table the ace 10 and take it down. Pretty phenomenally sized pot for just a middle pair. Following that, I'm in the small blind with eight, seven of hearts. With another gun straddle, the button calls, I call in the small blind. The big blind makes it 40. Could not get a cheap one. That brings the straddler along, the button folds, and I decide to make the call. So we end up going three ways to a flop of ace 6-4 with two hearts. Flopping a gut shot to a straight flush. I am definitely not folding this hand. But I check in flow. The big blind continues for $50. You could raise here at some frequency. The only problem with that is if your opponent just has an ace, they're never really folding. You could go either way on this one. You have so much equity in this board. Raising and just getting in and going for the run out is probably fine. But I choose to just call this one. Hoping to just turn a 5, 9, 10 for extra straight outs. But we end up turning the 7 of spades. So we make a pair. Now we're extra not folding. I check to my opponent. Prepared to call a reasonable size bet. Because I expect him to have an ace here a lot of the time. But he checks it back. And now the river is the 8 of spades. So we go backdoor two pair and I check. I absolutely hate this check. I think it's a huge blunder. If your opponent had any ace, he's definitely calling a bet, but he's probably not betting himself on this board. No reason to be afraid of exactly ace six as otherwise there should not be any sixes. My opponent did not bet the turn. So definitely need to go for about $80 worth of value here and not check and hope to just check call like an ace jack value bet. But because when I check my opponent checks it back, I have two pair I show first and I win. Could have made more, that's a blunder. But we're finally at the 2-5 game, got my vlogger optimal seat, get greeted with a small pot before the next hand of note. We arrive on the flop because I raised to $15 in early position with 6-8 of hearts. One late position player calls, both blinds call, four ways to a flop of 7-5-4 with two diamonds and a heart. We bink the nuts straight, what a sick flop. Well, there's a diamond draw to get value from, so we're not going to slow play this, especially into three other players. I bet $25. The late position player to my direct left makes it $75. This is an excellent development. He could easily have ace-10 of diamonds. He could easily have king-queen of diamonds. Maybe 7-8, eight, ace-7, 5-6, any two pair, and any set. On drier boards, I may just call this one. But there's going to be so many action-killing turn cards. I think I have to bump up the aggression right now. If a diamond hits the turn, eight, six, three, deuce, some aces for the three, four, all could kill my action. So I'm going to go for a flop three bet, but make it small. Try to get more money in here while I still have the nuts. I make it $200. And after a very short thought, my opponent jams all in for $920. Well, I snap call. I have the nuts. Let's freaking go. I immediately ask my opponent if he wants to run it twice. He agrees, says it's fine. And then I show my hand. See, I'm against pocket sevens. So going to have to fade some board pairing. First board comes eight of spades, 10 of hearts. Awesome. We lock up half the pot. Second board, eight of clubs. I actually thought that the board paired in the moment, but the eight was on the other board. And the river was the ace of diamonds. So we scooped this massive pot, getting it all in on the flop. I am very glad I did not just call the 75 as 
That 8 probably would have killed some of the action. I probably don't get full stacks in based on this exact run out. So put the money in while you have the best hand. This next hand is probably the most interesting of the vlog. An early position player makes it $15. There's one late position caller. I'm in the small blind. King 10 off suit. Definitely going to call. No need to three bet. It's somewhat weak, honestly. Big blind continues as well. So we end up going four ways to a flop of queen jack four. Heart, heart, spade. So two hearts out there. We don't have a heart, but we do have open-ended. When it checks all the way to the preflop aggressor, he checks, and the latest position player bets $20. I'm never folding. Like six outs to the actual nuts feel fantastic. Ace of hearts, nine of hearts, not nutted, but still happy to see those as well. And our king should be good some of the time. So I make the call, and we immediately bink the ace of spades on the turn. Two spades on board. We have the literal nuts. We don't have the betting lead, so we check it to our opponent, who doesn't seem to be scared of this ace. He bets $35. We're going to size up big here. There's hard draws to get value from, spade draws to get value from. If my opponent didn't care about the ace, maybe he has ace queen, ace jack. Maybe he has jack queen. Maybe he has king queen and happy to put more money in with pair plus straight draw. So we raise big. We make it $125. My opponent doesn't think too long before calling. He's got about $400 in his stack. Definitely going for the max on any safe river card. But the river is the jack of clubs. Oh no, it's changed now. Ugh, board pair. It's even worse than a flush, honestly. Because I'm thinking he's going to call more likely with ace, queen, ace, jack, queen, jack. So I check to my opponent. Hopefully he just checks it back, has ace something, but he does not. He bets $200. This is the point where I took the longest tank I think I've taken in my entire poker career. I think for over a minute and a half on this one. I want you to make a choice. And what's going through my mind is I don't have a heart or a spade, so maybe my opponent's turning a draw into a bluff. Maybe he's a sicko and can turn ace queen and go for some value there. But also, like, the hands that I'm hoping he could have that I'm beating would be King Jack and Jack 10. And I'm severely blocking all of that. It's such a weird spot. So on this hand, I hate my life. I hate the turn. I don't think I can really fold. But I eventually do end up talking myself into tossing it into the middle. So right now, comment below if you think this is a fold or this is a call. Okay, well, after I fold, my opponent is just kind of openly talking to his neighbor. Says he had pocket fours and should have bet less because he's getting called. So a major takeaway from this is you can get reads on what your opponent had if you just watch them after the hand. Are they disappointed based on the result of a fold? Do they look happy that you folded? You know, you can get some post-hand post tells sometime. and Sometimes your opponent will just say what he had. And I believe him, so there's that. Following that, I look down at Queen of Clubs, Queen of Diamonds. With one limp that I did not see, I raised the $20. If I saw the limp, it would have been $25, but it is what it is. Big blind calls, limper calls. We end up going three ways to a flop of ace, six, eight with two clubs. Hate to see the ace out there when it checks to me. I think my hand has plenty of showdown value. Not really getting an ace to fold here, so I think it's a fine check back. When I check, the turn is the five of spades. Now the big blind leads out for $35. The limper folds. I'm not folding to one bet. My opponent can easily have either flush draw out there. My hand's under repped, so we make the call. The river is a somewhat brick jack of hearts. I'm preparing to call any reasonably sized bet, but my opponent doesn't go reasonable. He makes it $150. Pot and a half. Okay. You know, I don't really ever expect him to do this with an ace. I think an ace can just go for a standard size of like 80 or 85 dollars maybe 100 but 150 way too much i suppose he could have like ace five or sometimes jack eight and do the same thing but there's so many missed draws out there i want to call so much i blocked the club draw and i don't block the spade draw so that's kind of going through my mind that he probably has spades where he just leads relatively big on flop on turn and just goes for it on river but on this one i just can't bring myself to pull the trigger. I make the fold, and right as I turn the camera off, my opponent flips over nine deuce of spades at me, so. And I had failed. He got a bluff through, good for that guy. Anyone who whips over the bluff for the vlog will probably make the vlog, so. I forgive you. Congrats to that guy. 
After that, I looked down at Ace Queen of Hearts from the big blind with an early one limp. Early position player makes it 20. Button calls. I'm in the big blind, make it 75. Definitely three betting Ace Queen of Hearts. The preflop aggressor is the only caller, so we're heads up to a flop of Jack 9 5 2 spades. I have backdoor straight draw, two overs. My opponent misses some of the time. This is going to be one of the times I just C bet on a three bet. I have aces, kings, queens, and range, pocket jacks, all that. So I continue for $85. My opponent decides to make the call, really hoping to turn one of my pairs, but the turn is the 10 of diamonds. So we turn open ended. King would be the nuts. I checked on my opponent, realizing ace high is a little bit of showdown value. I think I can check call pretty happily here. When I check, my opponent bets $135. Again, could have diamonds, could have spades, could have an ace 10 type hand, but we're not folding open ended and two overs to this bet. We make the call. And the river is the jack of clubs. I check, and my opponent assembles $350. Now I'm thinking doing some big folds, getting shown bluffs that maybe I'm just getting taken advantage of. But with this exact hand much worse than the queens, I really can't make the call on this one. So I let it go. And he does not show, so we'll never know what was correct here, but probably was not good. Stack still looking decent, in for 1,000. We win another small pot, battling back. And then the dealer puts out a five card straight flush on the flop. That's pretty fun to see. Don't see that too often, even though there's no pot, but fun nonetheless. Next hand of note. An early position player raises to $20. There are two callers, small blind calls. I'm in the big blind with pocket threes. I'm calling the $20. And we flop a three on ace, six, three, two hearts. What a dream. It's also an ace high board. Probably gonna get a ton of value. I check because I'm the big blind, no betting lead. And it checks all the way through. All right, I hope there's no hard on here. I would have went for a check raise if someone bet, get value from an ace. But the turn is a board pairing six. Six of spades. So now I think we can go for a somewhat exploitative trap and go for a check raise on the turn. Any of the earlier position players that had an ace feels pretty good about themselves. I'm not afraid of any river card anymore. And if someone has a six, we're definitely getting a ton of money in the middle. So I check, goes check, check, hope someone bets. The last player with cards does not disappoint. He bets $40. Even better, the small blind calls the 40. Well, we're definitely raising this. I make it 130. I have a full house, most likely the best hand almost always. But now the turn aggressor three bets the flop to 270. What is it? I don't know what it is. I mean, would he ever actually three bet with ace six or would he just go for value on the river? I'm not so certain. He definitely should never have aces here. Can't really have six three all too often, so... If he has just a regular six, I expect him to bet the river anyway. So in the small blind folds, I'm definitely calling. Can go for the max on pretty much any river that's not a seven, five, four, or eight. River being the king of clubs, extremely happy to see that one. My opponent should never have king six here. I check it, prepared for him to bet, and me put him all in. But he snap checks it back. So I show immediately, I guess he three bet the turn to be able to check back with aces maybe heart draws not so certain but we do win a decent sized pot with a full house and a final hand of note with a ten dollar button straddle the big blind limps an early position player raises to thirty dollars i'm gonna just call here i honestly expect that the big blind just gonna rip for three hundred dollars he's done it once already and then was called showed down eight ten off suit and ended up chopping so hopefully if i call He's enticed to rip, and then I can isolate from there. Button calls. Plan works perfectly. Big blind goes all in. The initial razor folds. I decided to just call. I don't really expect the button to ever actually have a hand that can continue if he didn't raise himself. And when he's facing an all-in-ana caller, he's probably just folding. And that works out as well. When I call, I show pocket tens. Ask him if he wants to run it twice. He says, sure. Says he has one overcard drawing to an ace. Sounds like a great development for me. First flop, king, seven, three, eight, five. Well, there's no ace out there. I should be good. He finally flips over his hand. He has ace 10, so kind of unlucky for him. Second board comes queen, jack, eight. Three quarters of a nine comes. Turn is an eight, and a nine comes. So I guess it's three quarters, but upon further inspection, my opponent has ace, 10 of clubs, and the bottom board was three clubs. So we end up chopping the last hand of the night. Disappointed, had a great chance to get a full $300 bonus before leaving, but we do chop up a little bit of dead money. Game over. So for this day, we are in the game for $1,000, out of the game for $2,290, which is a profit of $1,290. 
across five hours equates to $258 an hour or 51 big blinds an hour. Yeah, this is one of the very few times where I think I actually played somewhat good. You know, you make a $200 snap call with second pair or right, make a $200 fold when you have a straight, theoretically also right. So being able to thread the needle like that through the trickier spots with good justification for most of the decisions that you make is how you're gonna be successful in poker. If you have made it all the way to this point, thank you, I appreciate it. Please consider subscribing, helps me out a great deal, and I will see you on the next one.